Today we are going to talk about games and creativity. Hello everyone, I am Bartol for Gary Teachers and here we talk about TEFL, that is teaching English as a foreign language. Our very special guest for today is uh, Celeste Grimau from uh, Argentina, Patagonia. She's uh, a book author and she's also a school owner in uh, Bariloche. Celeste, thank you very much for having accepted our invitation. Welcome. Hello, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. First of all, it's uh, July and uh, for me it's uh, summer. What about you? What's the weather like in Argentina? Well, uh, today it's snowing. Let's see. Can you see it? Yeah, it's incredible. Wow. <laughs> for me, it's uh, high season in uh, the summer and for you, it's high season in uh, winter. You are a respected name in uh, Argentina. In fact, before the coronavirus, you used to travel all around uh, Argentina to deliver training for teachers. I would like to understand a bit more about your methodology and uh, your way of teaching. In my school, we have a special methodology based on games and creativity to teach languages. We have to find people who like this methodology and want to learn about this because they would have a training course once a week to learn about this methodology. In my school, we teach English through games and creativity. All the students from three years old to adults, we have people who are more than 80, play games when they learn English. I also prepared some games today. Maybe you would like to play with me. What do you think? I didn't expect that, but... Let's see what's going on. Okay, I'm totally in. Come on. I'm sharing uh, some of the games we played in my workshops. Uh, the workshops are delivered online, are called the Extra Mile, because last year when, when we had to start giving lessons online, we teachers from all over the world made a big effort, and that is the extra mile. I think that teaching through games is an experience, and experiences generate emotions. I learned how to make a cake, which is very popular in Argentina, with my grandmother. The name of the cake is Pasta Frola. If you ever come to Argentina, you should try it. I learned to make this cake with my grandma, and I never forgot. On the other hand, I I can make brownie, but I don't know the recipe by heart. I have to check every time I want to make this cake. In the first case, the pasta frola was a, a memorable experience because I made that with my grandma. There was an emotion there and my brain was connected to that. In the case of the brownie, the recipe goes to my short-term memory. This happens also when you teach a language. When teaching a language becomes an experience, and when learning a language becomes an experience, this is memorable, and this goes to your long-term memory. Experiences generate emotions, thoughts, opinions, and decisions. These thoughts, opinions, and decisions generate responses and these responses influence whether students will be motivated to take action or not and that is the experience and we have to make our experience memorable and in that way we know we are going the extra mile i took this slide from a book teaching with the brain in mind eric jensen which i strongly recommend let's play a game this is one of the games from my last ebook this is a, a game so students can get to know each other bartolo what do you prefer beach or mountains mountains okay netflix or youtube uh... YouTube. Phone call or text? Phone call. Okay. Instagram or Snapchat? <laughs> Neither. I don't do Okay. Uh, ice cream or cake? Cake. Okay. TV or books? Books. Chocolate or vanilla? <laughs> Chocolates. <laughs> Every well, time you can chocolate. come here, you know, in Bariloche, we have all the chocolate factories. Guys, members, pro members of Gallery Teachers, <laughs> <laughs> let's go all together in Bariloche. Let's eat some yeah, chocolate. We can have a congress here and eat chocolate. Fancy restaurant or fast food? Well, this is difficult because uh, I'm against fast food and I'm against fancy restaurants. <laughs> so homemade food, uh, fancy restaurants. Okay. okay, well, listen, uh, with this game, what I would do with my students uh, maybe for one of the first classes to get to know each other, 
they have to write the questions, ask a partner, and then they introduce their partners to the rest of the class. So you see, when we started playing this game, this touches you because this talks about you and students feel involved and there's fun and we laugh. We are in a positive environment and when there is no threat, students learn more. Games make connections that go to your long-term memory. You feel relaxed. That is an experience and that experience is forever. I agree with you. Uh, it's true that even if uh, it's the second time we talk, as soon as I started talking about my deep feelings about social media and restaurant, I felt more relaxed. Do you want to play more games? <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, this game is called In the Manner of the World. You have to choose an adverb from this list. I will ask you to do something and you have to do it in the manner of the world. For example, drink coffee in the manner of the world. Oh, <laughs> um, touch your nose in the manner of the word. Okay, is it bravely? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, with this game uh, also, uh, people have to pay attention. And you can have all the students at the same time paying attention. And they have to focus, they have to concentrate. Some students turn off their cameras. In my opinion, if you are present, you have to have your camera on. If you involve people, making them work and use their bodies, they have to turn their cameras cameras on. If not, you have the poor teacher delivering their classes with only one student there or black screens. And it's so sad. Teachers have to be more creative and offer students activities where they have to turn their cameras on because for this game, we all need to have to see you because okay. if you have a big group, they perform this at the same time. Interactivity is very important in uh, Zoom classes. I like this game very much. Let me ask you, can I ask you a question about that. Sure. I see that the word that you chose look like there's a lot of psychology behind. I'm wondering if uh, you're using this game to understand a bit more about the personality of your students. For example, I chose bravely, but I see, for example, hesitantly. So what if a student chooses hesitantly? What does it mean? Or if someone chooses quietly or loudly? I've never thought about that, but I think it's an excellent point to take into account. According to the level also, of the students, you can continue talking about why they have chosen that word and use this vocabulary for reflecting, maybe. For this story, uh, by any chance, Bartolo, do you have a pair of scissors nearby? And have you got a piece of paper? Yep. I learned this story from a friend of mine, Maria Marta Suarez, and she is the owner of a methodology called All Alternative Language Learning. She taught me this story and I adapted the activity. I think she learned it from a friend from Scotland. It's very important. I want to say that. This is a story of a tailor. This tailor worked for the king, but he was so busy that he was always dressed in rags because he didn't have time to make clothes for himself. One day, he was going to a very important appointment when you called the most powerful voice in the kingdom. Who are you? Why are you dressed like that? Me? I'm your tailor. <gasps> My tailor? But why are you dressed like that? Do I not pay you well? Yes, your majesty, you pay me very well. But, you know, I haven't got time. The queen needs clothes. You need clothes. The prince. Okay, said the king. I will give you a week holidays. And I will also give you this piece of cloth the Queen of Persia gave to me. With this piece of cloth, you have to make yourself a coat. The tailor went home, took the piece of cloth. Have you got your piece of cloth, Bartolo? He took his scissors and he cut. And with this piece of cloth, he made himself
itself a coat. Can you make a coat, Bartolo? Okay. I'm making you work. So it was the most wonderful coat you've ever seen in your life. And he wore it before the king and the king was overjoyed to see his tailor looking so smart. And he wore it into the village and everyone said, oh, what a wonderful coat. I wish I had a coat like that. Sorry said the tailor, there's no more material. And he wore it and he wore it and he wore it out. He was very sad and he went home and he laid it on the table and he said, I can still make something out of it. And out of the coat, he made a jacket and he wore it into the village and everyone said, ah, oh, what a wonderful jacket. I wish I had a jacket like that. Sorry, said the tailor, there's no more material. And he wore it and he wore it and he wore it out. And he was very sad and he went home and out of the jacket, he made himself a waistcoat coat. He wore it out and out of the waistcoat he made himself a hat. <laughs> and it was the most wonderful hat you've ever seen in your life. And he wore it and he wore it out. And he was very sad. And out of the hat he made himself a bow tie. But he wore it out. So he went home and he took his scissors and he cut and he made himself a button. Said the tailor, there's no more material. And he wore it and he wore it and he wore it out. And he was very, very sad. And he said, I can and still make something out of it and out of the button he made a story and this is the story we are listening to today and it teaches us that no matter what clothes we wear we are all part of the same story Very yeah nice. okay well this is the way we teach use, using games using stories and and for this with this story uh, you can teach clothes but also you can teach something like, I wish I had, okay, models. Uh, and well, and then students can represent the story. I mean, you can do many things. And we work with adults with stories too. Adults love the stories. Did you enjoy the story, Bartolo? Um, I was very interested in uh, your story because I wasn't sure I had enough paper. <laughs> I started to worry. And uh, I think this is uh, good because uh, I felt like I was the, the tailor because I had the same problem uh, the tailor had. So I had to sort out a solution while you okay. were continuing to talk. Very nice way to feel it and uh, do something. So I understand your point. We are in class and uh, we have to sort out problems. I wanted to show it uh, with uh, playing games because uh, I can't talk about games without playing games. Uh, yes, because also I want you to experience that uh, it works because it moves you, it touches you uh, and you feel present. When you play a game, you have to be there, you ha have to be present 100%. Imagine you are teaching numbers and we play bingo. You are concentrated not in repeating numbers, but in playing the game, in winning the game. You want to win when you play games. It's like you cheat your brain. You don't realize that you are learning and there's no effort. You said that you have a kitchen in uh, your school. Uh, am yes. I correct? Yes, we teach uh, through experiences. Students cook. If they learn food, for example, or instructions, they cook. Not only children. I want to make a point. I only teach adults and we play games. In a class of one hour, we play at least three games. What we do is we transform the book, because we have a book, and we transform the book into games. For me, correcting homework, it's something so boring. So we transform that task, correcting homework, into a game. The game maybe is very simple, like making paper planes. Imagine they have 10 questions for homework, and they have to throw the plane if they answer the question correctly. So they want to read their homework because they want to win the game. We play that with children, adolescents and adults. They are allowed to throw paper planes in the class. How do you check their progress? We have formal tests. We believe in assessment. It's not just one final test. We see if they are learning. Then we have a formal test because I think that when we tell students you are going to have a test, they study more. I want all the students to learn. So we find different techniques to make them learn. I think that games, 
cater for the three learning styles according to NLP, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. When you propose a game, all students are involved. Uh, for example, with this story of the tailor, this is great for visual students, for auditory students, or for kinesthetic students who are moving. They are all involved and they learn more. We evaluate our students in the process. And uh, what about dealing with uh, parents? I think this is uh, something increasingly difficult for teachers. It's uh, harder and harder to be the creative teacher because uh, sometimes people think that they know better. What's your approach with parents and people that ask you for a more serious approach? Well, in my school, uh, parents know about this methodology that's why they come here. They choose this methodology because in my town there are many other institutes. And I always invite parents on board. It's a good way of having parents on your side if you invite them on board. And also sometimes it's good to listen to parents because parents are not enemies, teachers are not enemies, and sometimes they come up with wonderful ideas that we as teachers don't see. They are very happy if you invite them on board, but they don't go into the classroom. You are the teacher. I am the captain. You can come on board, but we are going to do what I say. And the adults, I take some ideas from flipped classrooms. We teach in the class, we present the subject, and then we put the videos on the platform so students can go to the video and see the video again but in the class we practice we play games we use our bodies even in the online classes classes are not theory we just present the subject and then we use the language to communicate. What about the embarrassment that the adults feel in uh, speaking English? We have 16 levels. Each level is 40 hours. We try students to be in a group where they feel they all have the same level. That reduces stress and embarrassment because they feel they are all alike. And then another thing is supporting them because we have students who are very qualified in their area. Some of them are nuclear engineers, but they have to learn English. So we have to create a non-threatening environment where they feel happy, they feel relaxed, they feel at home, and that nobody is going to judge them. And fun. We include fun in our classes. How do you answer when they ask you when I will speak English? You are already speaking English because from the first class they speak English. For example, with the game we played at the beginning, you can play this game with people who are starters, because if you say Netflix or, I don't know, a books, they all know the word Netflix or YouTube, okay? So they are already speaking English. That's a good answer. What about going out with uh, your students? I've noticed two different school of thoughts. One is uh, I'm not paid for doing anything else. And then we go out and we get some uh, glasses of wine and it's a completely different approach. Here uh, we uh, have both. Uh, generally, we have the, the, the normal class, but also in our classes, sometimes we have picnics or, or they bring food and we share food, especially the adults can bring a beer, for example, and we have a toast. Last week, we had the final exams and after the exams, they had a small party. We are uh, with uh, all these restrictions because of the quarantine but uh, if not we used to have a big party uh, in a beer house uh, with pizza for the whole institute at the end of the semester and at the end of the year we have another a party or maybe a barbecue with all the students and we well we speak English in that party and students can interact with other students from other groups. Yes we are building community and I think this is great especially if we live in a small place people know each other and it's great that they see that other people they know are coming to the institute too and um, well they are uh, like on the same boat too, and they help each other. We also um, ask students from different groups to inter
interact with the other groups. So they have guests sometimes. Or if the two groups come to the institute at the same time, they may have a class together or they may cook together or share some uh, food together. Um, always when you include food, mm. people <laughs> I'm happy. I like the sense of community that you are building. We do our best to do the same at uh, Gallery Teachers, involving as many people as possible. And uh, it's uh, not always easy because uh, we have members from all over the world. You are also an author of uh, books. You wrote four books. They are called uh, Vitamin or Vitamin. It depends how you want to pronounce this. I, I try to pronounce it Vitamins because it's easier for Spanish speakers. <laughs> uh, vitamin Show Games. Each book has 40 recipes, 40 games to teach English using this approach. And during this time of coronavirus and the classes online, I have just published my fourth book with games to teach online. And well, and if people are interested, they can write to me. Uh, they are ebooks. I can send them online to any part of the world. There are also uh, special offers if you get the four of them. They are very useful. My teachers and my institute plan their classes using the books. Uh, I use the email of the institute, which is steps at bariloche.com.ar. We are also in Instagram, Steps by Lodge. And uh, you were telling me that you are also delivering workshops about games for teachers. So if we are interested in uh, taking one of your workshops... I usually publish them in my Instagram or in Facebook. Also, if people are interested, they can send me an email and I tell them when there is a new workshop. Also, some schools or institutes call me and I organize their workshops, close workshops, only for them. I train many schools, many teachers from Argentina. And well, I used to work in Chile, but now I can't travel. So now I deliver all the workshops online. Last year, I was in the TESOL conference in Egypt. It was fantastic. And... Uh... That's it for today. <laughs> Thank you to you. I felt very, very well and at home and I love doing this. So I want to thank you because I can uh, talk about what I love uh, because you invited me and because I think a lot of people will be listening to this. And well, I'm very, very happy here from the end of the world to <laughs> be able to share this with you all. Thank you. And, uh, it's been a pleasure for me as well. And that's all for today. I am Bartolo for Gallery Teachers and our very special guest for today is uh, Celeste Grimao from uh, Argentina, Patagonia. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, let us grow as a, a community. And uh, until next time, happy teaching and happy learning. Bye, thank you.